Hey y'all, Kevin Hutchison here with Realty Austin, and I am grateful to be a part of Stories Inside the Man Cave, a homegrown podcast just like my own business. Happy Sunday. That's the day of this uh, broadcast here, episode 114. I'm bringing in a guy, and I, I I love, I hate to use the term aging, but I call it wisdom. His name is Mike Caps. He's been around the baseball industry and play-by-play. He played it, and he was actually in the media. We'll discuss that a little bit later. But Mike Caps, the voice of the Round Rock Express, does this one of your career resume achievements that you'll be talking about the rest of your life that you were inside the man cave podcast? Let me explain to you what's going to happen to you because you right out of the gate, right out of the gate used aging. Bye. <laughs> really? You're going to aging in the first Freaking sentence. <laughs> yeah, I got the gray whiskers. I don't have much hair left. I don't. I don't have any. No, I don't know how much wisdom there is either. But that's what you got to work with. So get after it. <laughs> There's a lot to unpeel this. Uh, this multiple layers with Mike Caps. Uh, since I returned to Austin, it's almost approaching a decade. I honestly knew about you when you came up on, I think, Oklahoma City when the Express would play there. No, that was before they were AAA. But I had known about you. I had heard. And I was like, well, here we go. Our paths are crossing. Uh, first off, just to let everyone know, you and I are rivals. Uh, I'm a Stephen F. guy, and you're a oh, Sam Houston I went to Sammy High. Sammy High. That's what the Aggies called it. Is that all because right Aggies. down the road from College Station in Huntsville? They're Aggies, so <laughs> no, I love my Aggie friends. No problem. No, I do too. We all have them. We all need Aggie friends to balance out our lives. You it's, know, that's you, the way it works. You need to get your you need to get your vaccination too. Yeah. It's sort of you know, kind of the same thing. Yeah. You know, vaccines are extremely important. You know, we're not gonna judge, but everyone needs a vaccine. Yes, man. As we move forward. Yes, and this is not political, it's just no. an opinion. <laughs> hey, episode 114 with the Mike Cats brought to you by Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. Uh, Mike, first off, can, how do you sum up your life and <laughs> how somehow that you've involved baseball, a passion of yours, for almost your entire life? That's to do anything that you're passionate about. It's pretty impressive. And, it, and it's not as easy as it would seem to have a passion like that for almost an entire life? Well, it, it, it's it's genetic. My grandfather, my mom's dad, was going to have a chance, had he not been injured in World War I, to play for the for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, but he actually gave me the game, and, and along with my dad. I lost my dad when I was 17, but my grandfather was there all the way through my college playing career. And um, neither he nor I knew that I was going to have a chance to sign a pro contract. And I, I did, and I blew it off. That's a long, that's, that's about a three beer story, but, but the, the bottom line to the whole thing, Sean, it, it, the game never left me, even in the days uh, I tell people this story, it's God's honest truth. The second time over during the Gulf war uh, covering it for CNN, I was in the mountains of Northern Iraq and I, they said, look, bring all sorts of camping gear because you're going to be camping outside on the mountain. And we, and we were, well, I brought 12 baseball books and that's how I amused myself over eight months uh, being over there. So, uh, but it just, it never left. And to summarize all of it, we could take five of your podcasts and, and really not be finished with it because so yeah. many people have been involved. So many people have helped me open doors. So many people have slammed doors in my face, but that's life. And it, it was true. And, 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 and you learn from that and you, and you become, uh, somebody asked me the other day, how old are you? I said, I'm 71 going on 35. And I really do feel that way. But the bottom line is 
if you can't, it's, it's like if, if you can't accept disappointment in this life, you're going to have a rough life. Yeah. You really are. And, and, and I think the biggest summation of it is uh, baseball came back to me at a time where I was really struggling. I had some uh, psychological issues. I woke up in the middle of the night and busted my head wide open. Mm -hmm. I had to get into therapy and that was, mm. a, that was a lengthy uh, situation that came out of great. But if you think there's not a God in heaven, let me just tell you, the therapist was a four tour of duty side gunner on a copter of NOM and a licensed Presbyterian late minister. So, it, it, and I was already in, uh, I was not done at CNN quite yet, but I got done pretty quickly thereafter and got out, wrote a book with, uh, the scout who discovered Nolan Ryan, who ironically had scouted me in high school. And that, that's where the lengthy story comes in because it's, it's yeah. just, it's a crazy, crazy deal. But the bottom line was we wrote that book and boom, 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 that led to the broadcast booth. And away I went in 1996 after 25 years in the news business. So No, it's a natural fit. Hey, be sure to, if you're not already, you're probably watching this on our Facebook platform or YouTube, uh, but follow us on Twitter at Stories Man Cave. And of course, on um, Instagram, it's Stories Inside Man Cave, uh, just like that. It's all jumbled up one word. I, I hate that's the only thing I don't like about Instagram. But th this man right here has, as you mentioned, you need about four or five episodes to tell his story. It's a uh, it's all interesting. Uh, my days in the media, and even sometimes now, I'll sneak up to Dale Diamond and Round Rock for a game. And if you catch Cappy before a game, the stories, the humor, with, and there's scouts in the room up in that press box level. The stories. I mean, I know you're going to. Well, find they're mostly true, Sean. They're mostly true. Well, I would say you're <laughs> right. There may be a few exaggerations, um, <laughs> but you guys experience a rare moment with me. You know. I, I can't shut up long enough, but I'm pretty quiet usually when I'm up there because I'm listening. I'm fascinated by all these stories. And for you, that journey to Round Rock, as you mentioned, um, 1996, it, it, we can go all different directions. But what was it about the Express? Was it the Ryan family who lured you back or lured you to Round Rock and the um, baseball family? Well, in, in a roundabout way, yeah. um, Jay Miller and I, Jay was the original general manager out there, had been friends since the 80s. When I was a, a bureau chief for Channel 8 in Dallas's Fort Worth Bureau, I'd get frustrated on Friday afternoons and call over. <laughs> and I'd get one or two people on the phone. I'd either get Sandy Johnson, who was the assistant GM there with the Rangers in those days, or Jay. And they'd say, okay. Who are you pissed off at today? And I'd tell them, they go, well, you know, we got a case ice down. Come on over. <laughs> so I got to, this was in the, in, in the mid 80s. So I've been friends with Jay for years and years and years. And then I called him immediately after I left CNN and I said, hey, I am getting into baseball business. And he said, stay in touch with me. And uh, I had already worked a year, uh, one, two years, and then a year in independent ball, then a year at AAA. Then two more seasons at AAA, and then he called me in October of 98. I was living in New York City then, and he said, uh, what do you know about Round Rock, Texas? <laughs> and I said, well, I, I know it's 15 miles north of Austin. He said, no, no, what do you know? I said, that's what I know about Round Rock, Texas. He said, well, the Ryan family is going to move a franchise from Jackson, Mississippi over there and it's going to be double A. And I said, wait a minute, you're a triple A. You wanted me to come to work for you in New Orleans, remember? He said, don't worry about it. It's the Ryan family. It's going to be great. So he said, come out to the winter meetings uh, in Anaheim. And so I flew across country, went to the meetings, and, and that's where we sealed the deal. The winter meetings in 98. So I worked another independent season in Atlantic City. And then in 2000, I was in Round Rock, and that's how I got there. And, you know, Reed has – I got a chance. I did a documentary on Nolan uh, for Channel Eight in Dallas years ago, and met Reed and Ruth and 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 Reese while when they were young kids in in uh, in Alvin, and and actually watched Reed pitch in high school. And so you know we had that to go on, and it just it, it's one of those things. There, 
first of all, they're such great people. Right. Absolutely. Secondarily, the operation is is was then still is killer. I mean, you can go any place else in minor leagues, and you're not going to see any better than night after night in Round Rock, Texas. It's just, and and people will tell you that I've got I've got several friends on LinkedIn who either pitched or played there, and not necessarily for the Express, and they they are still. And, and it has been so, – some of them, it's been 20 years since they played there. But they're still glowing about what a place that is. Well, you ought to see it now. It's It's gotten even better. They go, no, those ballparks run down. No, they don't. No. That's another thing that the Ryans worked out with the city of Round Rock. We meet every year. We plan improvements, and they've done it. And it looks like – it looks better now than yeah. it did when we opened in 2000. There's no, no question about it. No, it's, it's honestly – to me, listen, I, I love baseball, period, but I have this affection for minor league ballparks. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I've only seen seven. That's it. I was I was floored by Bricktown Ballpark in That's Oklahoma great. City. It's great. But they had they don't have that same let's reinvest in ourselves as the Express and the Ryans and the city of Round Rock have had. For well, every- yeah, now I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in your face a little bit about that because uh, the guy who's been the president of that team for the last five or six years and his wife is a general. They are baseball people, and you know the Dodgers owned them until this about a month and a half ago, and so the Dodgers helped them really move into the front offices of. Oklahoma City power structure. And so they've begun, they've begun to see, you know, hey, we can make this place la- it's it's gorgeous. Yeah. It's located in the right place where we want it in Bricktown, Oklahoma City. And so let's keep this thing going. And you've seen it. Ancillary businesses, yeah. uh, wine tasting places, yeah. beer joints, great restaurants. Uh, if you can't find it at Bricktown, it ain't worth going to. So, and, and uh, really, so, so, you know, occasionally I've been known to go have a toddy or two. Oh uh, yeah. Places. And so is, they're, they're great. And the ambiance is, is tremendous. And uh, I, I think they, I think they're really coming on. I, well, I think, cause I left November 30th, 2012, kept in touch. I knew that there were some, there was a transition period before the Dodgers. Yes. Um, affiliation. Um, I just knew f- f- right before I left that it was still nice. It's just they needed to reinvest into it, and yeah, and know, they did. Yeah. It really, really looks. I mean, they, they've they've improved it. They painted. They they took that restaurant that was down the left field line, yeah, and they turned it into the Oklahoma uh, Sports Hall of Fame. And wow. it's tremendous. It's they, tremendous. They, moved it from, they moved it from Guthrie, yeah. Down to Bricktown, and it's it's awesome. It's awesome. That, that one in Guthrie was phenomenal. It right. was. It, it, it was. Know. But this is this is a whole different level because you can look out and you see a baseball field. So That's that one in Guthrie, you looked out and you probably saw two guys beating on each other. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Guthrie, but. Well, what, Guthrie, what? no offense. We do we don't mean any harm. It's just well, they were the state capital of Oklahoma at one it, time. It was. And That's. Yeah. And in the middle of the night, it moved to Oklahoma City. Well, so did the Colts to Indianapolis. So there you are. <laughs> that's right, Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, the ambiance and the experience at Dell Diamonds phenomenal. It, it, word of mouth is the best marketing. Have what do you see on the horizon for? Just your opinion, not facts. Where do you see this? the express going and what do you see next for Dell diamond? Do you, do you um, buy into any of the rumors that some point down the line, a third MLB franchise will be added to the state of Texas? You really try to get me fired. Don't you? No, no, I I want you to look, look, if you look at the, I'm not on the, uh, I'm on a different pay grade. Oh yeah. People are, that make those decisions, ownership and management. Right. Uh, and, and I don't ask to be in those inner circles. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it's I'm good with the way this is. But if you if you look at where we sit in this country, if you look at the real numbers of how many people are between Georgetown and San Antonio, yeah. you're looking at five to six million people easily. Crazy, crazy. And so, so, uh, and I'm I don't know if we'll ever get one here. Well, don't. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. But if I was, if 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 I was in charge of Major League Baseball ownership, and I was looking really. Um, I gotta, I gotta be political about this. Yeah, you do. <laughs> if I was, if, if I was, if I was looking for a spot in the country that's located uh, size-wise uh, and baseball fan-wise, knock it out of the park. It ain't Portland, Oregon. It ain't Charlotte. It ain't Nashville. Nashville's got two major league teams yeah. and it's one thing to sell season seats for a 42 game or whatever it is home hockey season or a seven to a nine game NFL season as opposed to 81 home games for the baseballs and that's just different and and think of all the business businesses that have moved here just in the time you've been here in five years unbelievable yes. yes and 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 i mean I, I i don't know what you want montreal get out of here they did that once they tried no offense but but and and great city clean city just like toronto is uh and and great people baseball doggone sure not in april or may and then you know they just turned down uh, doing that split city thing between Tampa and and Montreal, Major League Baseball like was ill ill uh, faded from the beginning. If you if you use common sense, but it's it look it, it, let's put it like this: it's going to be fun to watch to see what happens. Yeah, I, I agree with you. 100% I can't think that. of a better operating group to open up one, a better known. I mean, I mean, here you have the ex business president for the Houston Astros who knows this game, knows the business side of it better than anybody, anybody better. He's nobody better than Reed Ryan. So as I mean, what, 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 what do you need? If you're baseball, what do you need to see? What, what, what is it? It's need? right here. But, but again, I'm really prejudiced and I don't know what's going on. And people ask me that question all the time. And I say, you are asking me to go play in traffic. On 35 on Friday afternoon, aren't you? So <laughs> I ain't planning no traffic, but yeah. <laughs> I'll say I'll say this because I can. Um, and I want to respect the fact that you listen, they you're an asset to them, the express are, are and you and I know that you're grateful that's a part of you. Oh. Uh, but Reed, Reese, and Nolan, that entire family, on the next level of knowing how to deal with people people yes. people yes. Um, yes i'll say this round rock texas should be home to an mlb franchise because of the land space there's already that infrastructure of highway you don't have to worry about i-35 because if you got 130 but i i just think one day it's either going to be there or somewhere in between austin and san antonio that, that it just i'm not a big fan of this soccer model no offense to the austin fc a lot of people love it I'm glad it's here. I just think mm-hmm. baseball is the only pro of the big three that would work here. No major league. Yeah. We're professional, remember. Yeah. Yeah. And soccer is, let me tell you, they're on their way to becoming a really big force. Yeah, they are. Uh, in, as a marketing tool, as as, uh, as an entity, because so many kids have now – now my kids who are in their forties had played soccer coming up and they all have kids who are playing soccer. So yeah. that's how you grow this stuff And major league baseball should be watching this and saying, 
we need to grow this. And they've got RBI in the inner cities, our RBI bunch in Austin. Uh, I they love that. are the best. And at the end of the day, they're doing the best they can, but, but we just can't get enough to get baseball back in the inner cities and get a larger contingent of, of young black players. Stop and think about the common sense of this. Okay, so you get no guaranteed contracts in the NBA or NFL, right? And the NFL, far and away, is a more dangerous sport yes. than baseball or basketball. And I had a long chat with a friend of mine, Deacon Jones, who who is uh, one of the special assistants mm-hmm. uh, to the guy who runs Sugarland. And Deacon and I have been friends for years and years. He used to be the hitting coach in Houston years ago. And, and he, he says right flat out, if baseball doesn't do this, make it more attractive and, and, and share the message that you've got a pension that's second to none. Yep. You have guaranteed contracts. Use your athleticism where you can use it for 15, 18, sometimes 20 years instead of the average, what is it, 4.5 years for an NFL player or something if like that. that. Yeah. Yeah, if that, if that. Or a window. If you aren't caught on the sidelines and maimed by two 300-pound animals coming at you at warp speed, I mean, no bueno. <laughs> it's it's a different ball game, literally, as That's far right. as the physicality of it. Um, you know, I, I was going to talk to you, I, but I, I, I do want to make an extension of what you said. You mentioned the RBI Austin folks. Of course, there's a few of those chapters across Great the country. Great. 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 I, I'm on the mentorship side of that, but – I, I agree with you 100%. Um, Mike Price, or Matt Price, excuse me, Matt, Matt Price, Price, Justin Simmons, Kat Osterman, that entire group, it, it, it would take – Christy Becker, Ray. Becker, all yeah, of Christy, them. Christy Recker, she's awesome. She, every oh, one of these people. Um, Galindo, I mean, so we, we have a tremendous board. We have another uh, layer of trustees, if you will, who do the planning. Yeah. It is the best, the best hands down organization that I have ever aligned with. And Cappy, other night we had, I think you've been there. I think you spoke at it before. Absolutely. Uh, at the now at bat. Are you ready for this number? That night, this last Thursday, we set a record, I believe. We raised over $802,000 that night. What I say. <laughs> you can see this coming. And, 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 you know, somebody told me about a year ago that, that there are 64, 65 ex major league players that live within 45 minutes of our ballpark. And I believe that now yeah. I haven't, we, we check Karen and I chose not to go. Um, we're not quite ready to mix and mingle in a big crowd, but, but, but we, we have before and we will again, but nobody does that better than they do it. And with all those ex major league players uh, around here, I mean, there's a bunch of Bud Norris who used to pitch for yeah. us out here and then pitched the big leagues for several teams. I mean, Ian Happ lives here in Austin now. There's a ton of guys, man, and recognizable ma- major league names. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and it's, it, first of all, it's, it's great to have them because I have several of them that, I, that, that come on as color analysts with them. <clears throat> end of the day, sorry, NFL, sorry, NBA, the best guys to deal with. There's two best guys. There's major league baseball players and NHL hockey players, basically the same kind of dude. And, and one, one goes flying a little bit faster on skates and, but they're, but they all, I mean, they'll sit there and they'll sit there and drink a beer with you and, laugh and holler and they're the only people that can come close to uh telling the lies that we tell in baseball and mm-hmm. it's, it's awesome baseball conversations in a clubhouse or dugout <laughs> are the most unique now, i've been in some hockey locker rooms on the minor league level well uh that was just different it's different it's similar it's not like the nba it's not like the nfl oh, oh my it's just it's just different and it's it's good different yeah it's uh it's more throwback of America. It's more, yeah, it uh, is. Yeah, it is. It, it, look, it, 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 it's gosh. There again, I got to be political. Um, 
you like to see real people doing real things. That's what it is. And, and that's to me, I got a phone full of guys that came through here either as who played for us or played on other teams. And I call them up and I can talk to, it's like, try that with your average NBA player. No offense. Try it with your average NFL player. See how quickly you can get through. Yeah. Let you know what, agent. Hey, Cappy, what are you doing there? Are you still old? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> You're still old. <laughs> My kind of peeps. Yeah. Um, Cappy, one thing, <clears throat> you see it a lot on Twitter nowadays with the hashtag. You see it in discussions. Oh, you hear it. You don't see it. You hear it in discussions. When you hear the term baseball family, what does that mean to you? How do you oh, describe that to somebody? I pray for mine every night. And I'm not <laughs> I'm not those same people that I'm telling you about. I mean, I could start right now, and again, I'd need four shows to yeah. get through the names. I mean, uh, front office people, uh, clubhouse people. Uh, guys who once worked in a clubhouse and now are scouts like Gene Watson and, and his ilk. Um, gosh, it, it's it the 200 and something names, J just baseball people in this phone. I mean, and, and beep, 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 same old thing. It turns out into being a BS session for you know, an hour. But, hey, you know, in this day and time when we're all divided in this country and our egos are sticking out and we're hating on people, which we should never do. We should be loving on people. Yeah. My baseball family is what a blessed relief to call one of them up. The oldest one is 96 years old. The original voice of the Texas Rangers, Bill Mercer, who's done games for me down here. I, I've been in his presence. I've never had an opportunity. Well, to he's a piece of work, boy. I just were. I was Karen and I were looking through some pictures that were made at my my dad's uh, deer camp when I was like a seventh grader or something. And there, Bill and his sons. Bill's got a cigar hanging out of his mouth. And then we got a picture. Bill Bill decided he he got caught. He got caught in a deer stand way up high. It was 17 degrees. Well, Bill's 5'6". Well, he says 5'7". Sorry, but whatever. <laughs> hey, I'm the same way. So so he can't get down. They had to bring a winch truck out through the woods to <laughs> get him down, okay? So now he gets pissed off. And he had a 30 out 6 He had his Navy peacoat from World War II on and about a three-day growth of beard and one of those uh, – Russian looking hats and had air flaps on it. He takes off up through the woods. My dad says, You better go. I said, I'm not going anywhere near him. He's angry. He may just accidentally shoot whatever moves. So, man, it was there were, there were about 12 people sitting around the campfire. And it wasn't, I'm telling you, it wasn't five, seven minutes. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, you can hear him. And he's way on up in the woods. And he comes back. And he's he's got the big smile on his face. He's got the ear flaps pulled up on that hat. He's got his 30 out six. He's marching into camp like this. And he's got the biggest raccoon I have ever seen. And he has torched that thing, hit him three times. And what you have is a big tail, and you can see the ears, and everything else is sort of just goo. Okay. Mm. My dad said, put the gun down. It's time to release the trigger. Finger. Bill Mercer was one of those guys. My dad died when I was 17, and Bill was broadcasting the Ice Bowl game in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Found out about it at halftime. Had had some extra clothes. Instead of going home to see his family, he got in the car and came down and was with us for about a week. That's what I'm talking about. Bill was a minor league broadcaster before he ever became the Texas Rangers boys. In Muskogee, Oklahoma, Dallas Fort Worth Rangers AAA, Dallas Fort Worth Spurs. And uh, he's planning on coming down and doing a game with me 
this year. I don't Man, know. I, let me know. I, I will be. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's in a he's in an assisted living center in, in McKinney. But he, he's got his mind. The voice is still great. If you ever heard him on wrestling, and I just love to gig him about wrestling. That's a whole different. That that he should write a whole book on that. Uh, but it's one of those things where it, it, if there's a way he can crawl down from McKinney, he's going to come. So, and I'm was, he, was he related to the uh, the humorous talent in Oklahoma, Roy D. Mercer? No, and he takes he takes uh, Bill's from Muskogee. He was raised yeah. in Muskogee, but but no, no, no. He said, but Bill says, well, that's the way a whole lot of us were in Oklahoma in those days. <laughs> right. If if any of your any of your man cave guys or ladies want a couple of giggles this is it's a different kind of humor now different yes, kind it of humor, is. but it's Roy D. Murphy. oh good lord <clears throat> I, I bust a pop not on your forehead <laughs> <laughs> i've never heard that anywhere else but oklahoma oh that's the only place that is the only place um so you sent me an email and i read it and i'm i love anything to do with the history of baseball um, this one right here, you, you, you tag team, you had a co-author of book, so to speak, uh, baseball's intrepid infantry grinders. Yeah. A summation or summary of this book that you well, have. It, this is, this is easy to summarize Yeah, and it's, it's just flipped up or it's grinders, baseball's intrepid infantry. Oh, book. okay. So that, that's all and, and and, and the, the manuscript just went to the publisher and will be out with it at All Star Break. Okay, if anybody can relate to being a grinder, okay, wow. because here's the deal: it, who do you who do you think represents the biggest number of players in big league baseball or minor league baseball? Who yeah, superstars? It's grinders. It's guys who are up and back. That's a great point. Just to, give you, just to give you a hint about it, my grandfather is the one who got me off on this. We were watching a game in, uh, in at Old Burnett Field, and that field was torn down in 1965 when they built what turned out to be Arlington Stadium. It was first Turnpike Stadium, and the Dallas-Fort Worth Spurs played there. But we're out there watching the game, and he points to the guy in left field. Well, Minneapolis Millers are in there. It's AAA team in the American Association. Left fielder was Carl Yastrzemski. Oh, father says you got to watch this guy. He's going to be something. Well, he turned out to be. He turned out to be. And my grandfather played and and was had a chance to play pro ball and did because he got lost hearing in an ear in World War One. But he said he and I looked in the score sheet and he's got all these checks beside other guys' names. What that? He said these guys you'll see their names in box scores in Boston. And in Kansas City, Kansas City A's in those days were the Rangers. He said, you'll see their names back and forth between Dallas and Kansas City, Boston and Minneapolis. He said, those are the guys that drives the, – they are the engine that drives baseball's bus. Yes. Sean, that stuck with me for 62 years. 60 – well, we've been doing this for you. 60, 58 years. That's where grinders came from. And these are guys that go back and forth and up and down. Yeah. And we have 10 X round rock express players who we have profiled of the 43. The stories are incredible. And I did two years of research before I started to write this thing just to see if anybody had ever written on this subject. No, every superstar in the world has, has a book about it. Yeah. There are there's nothing on grinders, and we we this this thing is just it, it's just exploded, and people are going to say, well, why about this guy? All right, we're not telling you we're putting the only grinders in a book. Chuck Hartenstein, who passed away in October, is the co-author, and because his family and my family have been tied together ever since he signed with the Cubs in, in the sixties out of, out of UT, look him up. He's still in the college world series uh, record book for That's ERA. Right. So, uh, and Chuck passed away, but I'm going to keep his name on any other books I write grinders wise. And we have two more planned after this original one. 
uh, simply because he, he's just been a family friend. My cousin signed there for the Cubs and, and, and Joyce, his wife, they're just wonderful people, baseball people. Yeah. So that's, that's where the idea came from. And we're really excited about it. It's uh, I can give your folks a way to look at the page. Uh, it's, 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 it's a preemptive page. If you might want to write this down in case anybody asks you. Yeah, let me see. Let me get the Stony pen. Creek. Huh? S T O N E Y Stony Creek Publishing dot com forward slash grinders dot H T M L. H T M L. Stony Creek. That's S T O E S T O N E Y Creek. Uh huh. Publishing. Publishing.com. Grinders. HTML. And this is the, the, the page shows you how to pre order. And, and so you're going to be. I'm going to, for, for you, my order. friend, I'm going to create, if I can get my graphics software back up, I have had a problem with it in the past 24 hours. I want to create something. As, Did you uh, slip and fall in a drunken stupor into your machine or something? Well, I, I wish I had a story like that because I was at the Shoal Creek Saloon um, yesterday. Mm -hmm. By the way, their gumbo there, it's crawfish season. Oh, yeah. Of it. Uh, yeah. I didn't have that. It's too. It, I ate a lot of crawfish in my day, but now it's just too much maintenance, too much. So I go for the bowls, the large bowls of gumbo. It's uh, phenomenal. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a reminder as I promote this episode. Uh, we're going to create a page. I appreciate you doing that. No, I think it's a great. No, you're more than welcome. Um, those types of books. And I know, and I want to show you a book real quick. Uh, she is a very, very special. You probably know about her story. It's, uh, I want to give her the link because she is a huge baseball fan. And she's been on stories inside the man cave uh survivor of two forms of cancer she's a little, about five years younger than me uh used to, has her phd was a ut professor um her mom she and her mom their dream was they grew up she grew up in new orleans was to visit all the major league ballparks so well i've heard about this lady okay yeah this is her book and i've yes. got yes 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 yep yeah, there we go that's yeah. the one that's yep. You talk about a, a unique read as far as how it's presented. Beautifully done. I can't wait to read yours, Grinders. Well, it'll be out in, Jan in July. So, yeah, uh, we're going to start promoting this bad boy. Um, I don't know how we're going to make this transition, but we do have a new partnership, Cappy. Um, it's called Manscaped.com. You have some big name athletes. You have just little pebbles of salt like me and in this podcast, but to save Cappy um, wasted moments of his life or, or of us having the conversation about it, because I don't think we would be able to get through the conversation uh, and, and seriously talk about manscaping. I'm going to have to, I want to show him this. <music> Yeah, we're covering about every topic imaginable here at Man Stories Inside the Man Cave, including manscaping. Manscaped.com is so popular that they have their own periodical, a newspaper, in their top headline, We Say Balls, is pretty popular nowadays. And, you know, they really attracted me so much so that I, I love the products. And they sent me this entire package I'm going to show you. Well, the... Premier products of this box I just showed you, the Performance Package 4.0. This bad boy, the Lawnmower 4.0. Take a listen. That is the sound of absolutely tremendous manscaping in the man cave. So today, as you're watching this episode, I encourage you to jump on to manscaped.com and look for the performance package 4.0 you'll get the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer it is smooth and you just feel like a piece of silk afterwards and you feel clean personally 
I mean, let me show you what I love the most. Right here, the ball deodorant. I know the light's a little bright here, but the ball deodorant, it smells like sweet mahogany and pheromones. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. Feedback? Whoa, stop, stop. You're killing me here. Okay, so these are the kind of balls I say. <laughs> Texas League. Okay, see, Texas League. Okay. How about this? American Association when it was a AAA league. I broadcast in Nashville. Wow. Look at that. Those okay. are nice balls, Cappy. Hang on. Pacific Coast League. 15, 16 years, then they did away with it. Major League Baseball did. Hey, look at that. See, they had a great run. Hey. There it is. Uh, Northern League, in the Northern League, independent ball. That was in 98. Yes, sir. Uh, and Atlantic League, which is still operating. It's an independent league back east. Yes, sir. That is so cool. That is really Those cool. Those are the balls that I want to be known as saving. Okay. Don't put that ball deodorant on those balls. Uh, I don't think you ever worry about that. <laughs> okay. All this other stuff I could have said, this will what is what will get me run off. Excellent. I can't wait. <laughs> you can't win. How did they get rid of you? Well, you just is a manscape and oh, <laughs> Cappy. I think this part of the last part of the first segment was made for you. The man cave story brought to you by Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. If there's one story that you love talking about from the clubhouse, the broadcasting booth, or your interaction along the road or other places, what is that story that you, your go to story that you love to share? I've got a million of them that I can't tell you. I, I, I had one, a feeling. One I can tell you, and it involves. It, wait, let me ask you. Jim Saxton is he kin to James Saxton? That's him. That's, That's his daddy. Dad. Okay, all right. He's, he's, many stories about James Saxton. Love the guy. He used to go to Rotary with me here in downtown. Is Austin. that right? God rest his soul. Okay, so so Jackson Ryan is now twenty one years old. Yes, yeah. great guy. He's a, yeah pitched in D three with cerebral Paul. He's he, he's one of my heroes in life. And he is the closer for this book where I'm writing, okay? And the story is incredible. Jackson Ryan is nine years old. And Jackson is doing analyst work for me. He does not realize or is not paying attention that his, his grandfather, his grandmother, his mom, and dad are seated outside where the radio piped into them from their booth. As you've been in there. It's right next to my, my broadcast booth is right next to Nolan mm -hmm. and Ruth or whoever the guests are. And it's been that way since, since we remodeled the top mm -hmm. and put, put the, the, the press box up on the third floor. Well, so we had a big time pizza conglomerate as a sponsor. I mean, they sponsored, Fence signage, radio, blah blah. And one of the things they they promoted was was uh, scoreboard updates. Brought to you by Blank Pizza. And Jackson's got his headsets on. He's listening. I said, uh, whatever it is, pizza. It's a favorite piece of the Round Rock Express and of Jackson Ryan. Nope, 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 nope. He says, and I'm looking at him, going like. Dude, they're a big sponsor. What we look up and Reed is charging out of his seat, and you can hear him on our headsets. Jackson Ryan, Jackson Ryan, Blank <laughs> Blank Pizza may not be your favorite, but it is now. There may not be a location uh, near you, but but it's your favorite pizza. Jackson looks at me, and he takes his headsets off, and you can hear all this on the air. Cappy, I think I have to go. <laughs> he says, I might be back tomorrow. And Reed, the door bursts open, and Reed is just going after him. And Jackson, there he's toddling off, man. And oh, one, of the, one of the things he asked me about when, when I told him I was going to do a profile on him in this book, he said, please don't tell that story. I said, 
Oh no 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 no! You first of all, you already committed. We're not putting any caveats on this because it's it's, it's too good. <laughs> I mean, that kid, he's he's wonderful, and you know what? His ambition in life is to be a major league general manager. He's going to. He do can it. do it. He's a he's sharp, sharp, sharp young man. He is a baseball savant. And he's quite an ambassador to Mary Hardin Baylor University. Yes, he is too. And, yes, uh, he is too. God, the facilities over Pitch there. it, D3, and he has cerebral palsy. That's just amazing to me. Yeah, we got it. We're going to get him on the inside the man cave. We really have to do that. He's just special. He's, special. Uh, he's, he's, I look forward to seeing him every time. Hey, I saw him at the RBI dinner the other night, and just that whole family, just a bunch of good human beings. Yeah, fine, right. fine Americans, if you will. Yep. It's, uh, we're going to take a quick break. Segment two will be very quick, but more storytelling from our guy here. Mike Caps, a long time everything. Oh, uh, play baseball. I ain't dead yet. No, you've got about a good 30, 40 years left. Uh, I'll uh, take 20 and see you in the morning. How about that? See you in the morning and a cup of coffee. <laughs> hey, we're going to talk uh, the Rangers organization a little bit and maybe if. Uh, Cappy is warm and willing. He will fill us in on some ballpark stories that he has uh, encountered along the way. That's coming up on the other side of this break. For all of your insurance needs, look no further than our primary sponsor, Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. The ATX OG has been insuring Austin for over three decades. And get this, Jim Saxton is a Longhorn legacy. He is the son of the late, great James Saxton, who was a Heisman finalist. Be sure to give him a call or better yet, visit his website, saxtoninsurance.com and tell him that the stories inside the Man Cave Boys Recommended you. Hey, welcome back. Look at this, Cappy. We're we're kind of uh, off to the left here, uh, but. You know what? You said this was a few about nine years ago. No, no, no. Then. It's been about. Listen, that he was, he was twelve then. Okay, seven, seven years ago. Seven years ago. Yeah. Well, you haven't aged. I'm just being honest. That's you doing your play-by-play duties. I believe it looks just like it is Dale Diamond. It is. Uh, because I see the Rudy's Cup, good sponsor. Um, good food, underrated barbecue. Um. You you have experienced quite a few moments in that press box. By the way, segment two here brought to you by FarmhouseDelivery.com. It's a ATX based. They source organic meat, organic produce from the great state of Texas. And if you use the promo code after ordering either your milk kits, uh, meats, produce boxes on FarmhouseDelivery.com, use the promo code MANCAVE, you get 20% off of your first order. And who is this who has joined us? This is my number two fan. My wife, Karen, is my number one. This is Archie. Archie. Archie is the dog walking his best boy in the world. A rescued from a, um, you were rescued from a place in Pasadena, Texas, weren't you? Wow. Your mom found you online five years ago. He's the best boy. He, he goes Everywhere we're this, he's a good front door dog. Guards the front door. Look at him, Archie. Hey, Arch. He's a good old boy. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you want to hear a you want to hear a press box story? A press box story. From- all right. Now I'm going to try to leave out all the cussing that, that went on. This was in our first triple A year, I believe. And the games were played back on cable channel 10 and Round Rock, okay? So what do you think the umpires did instead of going to work out or going to chill out? They watched the previous night's game on cable channel 10. And 
I have never backed off of saying that if I see, I, I don't go after umpires unless both benches are going after them. Right. And I don't go after them like both benches go. I just point it out. Well, the previous night's game had about six missed calls on the bases and the the strike zone was from top of your eyeballs to top of your shoes up and down wow and from Hutto on the one side to Georgetown on the next <laughs> and it was just saying all over the place okay so I'm walking in about three o'clock about 303 the door bursts open and it's one of the umpires it's the crew chief I'm looking for my caps. I said, you're looking right at him, dude. What's your, what's your problem? And first of all, what are you doing up here? You have no business in the press box. And if I call the league president, mm -hmm. the president of my team, you're going to be answer, uh, you know, you're, you're the most – I can't do this without cussing. I mean, he just he, – he really was cussing the heck out of me. And, and I said, you know what? If both benches are going after you, there's a reason. If, yeah. if, if you've pissed off both sides, there's a, you're just too negative. You're just too negative. You're just – I said, yeah, and you're too short. <laughs> Get out of here. So I said, I, I'm going to go down and see the president of our team, and we're going to talk this over. I'm not going. I said, yeah, well, so shows how gutty you are. Well, uh, went on and on, and I finally said, you didn't have to leave or I'm call the cops, one or the other. You know what you want to do. So he left. And then I had a discussion with our folks, and they had a discussion with the league folks, and that fellow got a few days off. And I, I, I like I've I've had, I had great friends who were umpires. I don't know if you remember the name Durwood Merrill, great American League umpire for years and years and years. Dear, dear friend. Lost him way too early. Uh, and, and they're great people, and, they, and they, so many of them really do give their heart and soul yeah. But but there's a, there's a group now that just they 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 want to be the show and they're not and that's frustrating and you know that, so I, but but that's that's about as good as I have. You are well versed on baseball history, and we are in a time frame. I, I think you can agree with that. We are still integrating several parts of America, uh, mm -hmm. and. So, you know, I went to Anderson, the newer one, and there's old Anderson that was. Yes, on yes, yes. So I've been. A, what little I've done, I've tried to tell stories to helping and connect. And but there is a faction, a, a large, a pretty good group of people, Anderson parents involved in athletics who have made a tremendous effort. The one I want to talk about is the Willie Wells event that's coming up next Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um. So they're going to they're going to rename the field after him at the current Anderson High School. I think that is awesome. And I awesome. It almost makes me, you know, a little hesitant. You know, I'm just like I don't know what to say. It's moving. And well, it's it's I'm glad to see Anderson do that. I live right, right down the street. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And, and and look, um one of the profiles we did in this book was on the Hairston family, Sam Hairston senior. And he has, he had, there's nine of them play professional baseball, five major leaguers. And they've got uh, Sam's great grandsons are coming and, and they're probably going to be the baseball's first four generational family. Well, um, I have a particular affinity for the Negro Leagues because my great-grandmother was black, number one. And number two is I just know so many people who have come out of those leagues. There, some of them are gone now. Yeah. Uh, and, and how American baseball fans got cheated out of seeing some of the best all-time players, just Josh Gibson, uh, Double Duty Ratcliffe. I mean, guys that nobody ever heard of really but should have been – household names in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Ernie Banks and Hank Aaron came out of those leagues. A lot of guys came out. But those guys, the, the last two I mentioned, 
were among the last to be signed by Negro leaguers to be signed by major leagues. And, wow. and end of the day, um, and Hank Aaron had the home run record and Ernie Banks probably was the best hitting shortstop ever, but those weren't the best players ever in the Negro leagues. And in, in, in deference to how great they were in major league baseball. I mean, I, I just, it's, uh, I, I, we're going to make a trek to, to, uh, Kansas City to the Negro League Hall of Fame just because uh, Bob Kendrick is a friend, the guy who runs it, and uh, we're, we're just – I'm so excited they're doing this. Now, where is this going to be? It's going to be at the Anderson High School the baseball field. Bob will be there. Uh, Kendrick will be? Yeah, Bob Kendrick. Yeah, that, that, when he's – if he's there, you know it's a big deal. Oh, that is awesome. And it, Yeah, it, well, it says he's speaking. Yes, yes. Hey, Ben, tell me something good. You might recognize that voice, Cappy, the son of Mike Hards, his youngest son. Oh, my. Uh, perfect kid, perfect voice talent for that. So, yeah, tell me something good brought to you by Kevin Hutchison of Realty Austin. My brother, what would you say would be good in your world that you've seen that gives everyone hope or should be positive? It's hard to stray away from what you just, the announcement you just made at, at Anderson. I mean, that's heavy duty stuff. No matter how they got there, they got there. And, and, and that, I just, I, 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 I levitated a little bit. Oh, after I saw that, that I, I got to give a big shout out to a friend of mine. I know there's a lot of people who are responsible for that. Um, but well, John Fiddler, I think you may know him. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard him. I don't know, him, but played I baseball know. at the University of Iowa. Um, moved his family here, and he, I think, it, and he may kill me for this, but I think I should know dental dental recruiting business that he operates and runs of his own. That's what he's in, but he's loves baseball. He was in that Arizona Diamondbacks organization when they won the world series with Zeke. And I think Randy Johnson, all those guys, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a great guy, knowledgeable. You guys would sit and talk for hours. There's no doubt, but, uh, you, you, but he's responsible for this Willie Wells situation this whole awesome. event and That's tremendous. he spearheaded the only other good thing the the, the the other good thing besides the fact it's sun shining and beautiful 60 degrees on this sunday afternoon on uh march the first our minor leaders line up start spring training out in april the 5th 705 start el paso chihuahuas round rock express tickets will go on sale soon Season tickets are always on sale. I can't wait. I can't Me wait. Baseball always infuses some positivity. Yeah, it does. When you, when you need it. Yeah, it does. When you really need it. It's, uh, I cannot wait. I'll tell you something good before we wrap this up. Um, there's a lot of people still on edge as they, sh I, I get it about what's going on. But like Cappy said, it's sunshine. And that's what we – This is to, we're heading into probably the most beautiful stretch of weather. I, well, maybe more so in March in this great city of Austin, this whole Austin area. This is we'll – start, we're getting close to that March and April zone where it is just absolutely stunning here. And we're the envy of a lot of places across the country. I know there's a lot of people who watch or listen to this across the country. But the fact that baseball season is that close – if you have issues, just go to a game. You'll leave there. You'll have those issues resolved more than likely. That's yeah. for a baseball game. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Cappy, it has been fun. I know it would require probably quite a few more episodes to get all those stories in. But, man, I we are excited about your book. And I look forward to seeing you at uh, at these games and, uh, and watch you in the booth as well. Okay, buddy. Take care of yourself. Hey, buddy. Have a great day. And for the OG man inside the store, oh, wait, stories inside the Man Cave Boys, that being Hardball Hards, Big Mike, and Coach Mo, and for the legend himself, Mike Caps. <laughs>
We are out. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. I'm in my car in the giddy up.